guys, welcome back to my channel and another video here. Today I have for you an updated nail care routine and I did one of these in May of 2021, but a lot has changed. You know, I've added some things, I've taken away some things, I just have discovered a lot of new ways to do things. And I've had a few people request this as well. So I figured I would just hop on here and, you know, show you my day-to-day -day nail care routine, give you some tips and tricks and some do's and don'ts in order to maintain your nails at whatever length they are and just keep them, you know, strong and healthy. And I'm not a doctor or a scientist, so please, you know, I'm not like the definitive source on nail health. I'm just talking about what I've seen and observed in my own life and with my own nails and what has tended to keep them strong and continue to grow and just look nice. Some of this stuff might seem really basic or straightforward to you, but that's because I'm just going through my entire nail care routine. I'm not skipping anything. I'm going to show you from, you know, the beginning to the end of my day, how I handle my nails and what I do with them. And I just really like, I'm, I'm a routine person. I love, love a good routine. I really like when a schedule is set and then everything goes according to that schedule. I like everything planned out and I like it mapped out and I really like lists and things like that. And so I'm nosy and I like to see other people's routines and lists and methods and things like that in order to maybe see how I want to integrate that into my own life. And so that's kind of what this is for you guys. So while I'm talking, I'm going to overlay some footage of me, you know, going through some of these steps and showing you how I do a few of these steps. So, you know, strap in, it might be a little bit chatty, but I do have some stuff to show you. So as you can see, my nails look a little crazy right now. My hair cut this one off and it hurt really bad, but usually they tend to be this length, but my nails, I need to repolish them. So right after I film this, I'm going to film the B-roll for what you're about to see on your screen. And the very, very first thing I do in my nail care routine is I completely remove every inch and every speck of polish on my nails. You wanna be thorough, and I know that sounds really obvious to a lot of people, but I see some people who just kind of remove most of it and then they paint over what's there. You're always gonna have better luck. Your manicure is going to adhere better on a completely clean nail base. And so make sure you're getting everything off the top of your nail, the tip of your nail, and underneath your nail. I typically use 100% acetone for this step. It's just my preference. Some people find it really drying, and it is, of course it is, but I can fix that later. Um, but for like an everyday manicure, 100% acetone just gets it off the quickest, gets it off like the most thoroughly. And I do also have Zoya Remove Plus, which also works well. And I tend to use that when I am doing swatches, like a lot of swatches, because it doesn't dry out your nail or the area around your nail as much. So it just looks better for pictures, honestly. And that's what I like Remove Plus for. But if I'm doing a general day-to-day -day manicure, I don't care about it drying out my nails in between because I'm going to rehydrate that later. And so I just use 100% acetone, which I buy by the gallon at Sally Beauty. Step number two is filing maintenance. And I use exclusively a glass file or a crystal nail file. I'm not sure. Like, I think I've seen them called both ways. And I typically do this like every other manicure or so more thoroughly, but it's kind of an as needed thing. You just do it when it's necessary. I polish my nails pretty frequently, like two to three times a week at a minimum. And I work at a computer. So with the constant typing, it does dull and kind of like wear down the tips of my nails. So I do have to reshape like at least once a week. And the way I do this is I have to file the sides of my nails a little bit more uh, pretty gently. You know, I don't go ham. I've seen people argue against this method, but for me, I have a tighter C curve. And as it, as my nails get longer, that curve seems to kind of dip in the middle. Like, I think I've said this before, but my nail kind of gets a waist and it dips in in the center. And if I don't file some of that down and loosen that waist up, it will eventually just snap my nail. Like my nails just snap themselves if I don't file the sides. So you kind of have to assess your own nails and decide if that's right for you. But it also helps to get rid of any potential snags that have come up just on clothes or something like that because there are like little micro snags that 
when I bend my nails a little bit, it can start a full on break if you're not careful. So I just glide it very gently on the sides of my nails and then I follow up by doing the tip. I have square shaped nails right now and so I just try to make sure it's flat and I try to make sure that it is like a perfect straight line when I'm holding my nails in my nail pose because otherwise like sometimes I can kind of accidentally file it a little bit on an angle and then you don't notice until like three days later and you're like oh what did I do and then once I filed that straight and I've gotten my nails to the length that I want them I just round out the corners because with a square nail you know if I have those perfectly sharp corners I snag them on a lot of stuff and then they break the nail and so I keep the rounded corners not only just for that purpose but because I don't know if you can see that but I, I scratched myself the other day because my nails were too sharp so you know it's for a self safety thing as well if you prefer a different nail shape like rounded tips you know I, I've had rounded nails in the past and one thing I found that because I type so much, they do end up flattening at the tip and I do have to take off a little bit more to re-round them out, which is one of the reasons why I switched over to the square shape. But if you have a different nail shape than me, you know, your, your filing system might be a little bit different, but as a square nail haver, that is how I do my nails. After that, I, as needed, typically once a week, but sometimes more, I will go around each nail and I will take a pair of cuticle nippers. And I'm not sure how many people get this, but I do get some dead skin on the side of my nails that tends to dry out and it can be a little bit painful. And it does stick up and touch my nail, which makes it impossible to paint my nail properly. And if you snag them and they pull, like you're starting to pull on live skin and that can also be really painful. So I just go through and I clip off just the dead skin that is sticking up around the side of my nails. That way it prevents it from pulling up any live skin because not only, like I said, does that hurt, but it looks pretty bad and it can bleed. But also, you know, when I'm painting my nails, they get in the way of painting and, you know, you can see it in the swatch photos and it just makes your nails look a little bit cleaner, a little bit more put together. For step number four, I focus on my cuticles and that's just cleaning them up and pushing them back. Now I have cuticle solvents for this and I have two different ones. I have the Sally Hansen gel one and then I have the Blue Cross one that is, I almost said Blue Cross Blue Shield, but the Blue Cross, it's like a liquid, it almost looks like milk. And my preference by far is the Sally Hansen one, just because of the consistency of it makes it stick on your nail right where you put it. Uh, the other one, it gets everywhere, it's kind of messy, but they both work well. And then I just take either an orange wood stick, a metal cuticle pusher, or my glass cuticle pusher. It just, there's really no like rhyme or reason to why I pick which one I do. I just pick whichever one I feel like. And I push the cuticle all the way back and then I just drag it around that curve of my cuticle and then I drag it up the sides of my nails to get rid of any uh, excess skin that might be there. And all this does for you is it makes your nails look a little bit cleaner, a little bit more uniform, and it frees up a little bit of nail real estate for you to paint on. So if you have shorter nails, this is a step that can really help give you a little bit of an illusion of length because because that skin can like it's dead but it's like on your nail I'm not sure how it's called there's like an official word for this but um it can take up quite a bit of space and it can cause if you paint over it it can cause your manicure to look a little bit lumpy so this just really gives you a cleaner more refined look on your nail step number five is painting my nails and you know is this part of nail care in my opinion I think so because I always always like to have something on my nails I feel like nail polish adds an extra barrier you have your base coat your top coat as well so it really does give you a little bit more strength to your nails and I feel like it minimizes the chance of a break I tend to break my nails more when they are bare than when I have nail polish on them in fact I find it's pretty rare that I do break my nails when I have polish on my nails. And the way that I paint my nails is I always use a base coat. I don't use a base coat for like staining purposes. I don't care about nail staining because I always have my nails covered. Um, so I use a base coat that is a like longer lasting base coat to help make sure that my nail polish doesn't chip. 
And my preferred base coat is the Orly Bonder base. Some people say that that base coat itself can stain your nails. But again, like I said, I, it doesn't bother me because my nails are always covered. Then of course I put my polish down and then over the polish I use a top coat. My go-to top coat is the Glisten and Glow Quick Dry Top Coat. But I do have matte top coats and I have a variety of top coats that I try here and there. But I, without fail, I always top coat a mani. And when you're painting your nails and top coating your nails, I would recommend you wrap the tip, so to speak. And that's where you bring your brush across the tip of your nail. And I even do it on the sides when my nails are at this length because they're so long. And that will kind of make your manicure look even more like salon-esque because when you get that tip wear, you can kind of start to see, it's it's almost like your, your nail polish is shrinking in. And so it really just brings the whole aesthetic look to your mani together and it makes it look more professionally done, just more put together. And a lot of people say it helps your manicure last longer too. I wouldn't know because I literally wear nail polish for three days and then I change it. Step number six is oil all day, every day. I keep oil on or around me everywhere I go. And I think like everybody kind of has their own personal idea of how often you need to oil. And I think with your own personal body chemistry, you might see how it wears on you throughout the day or maybe just the way your lifestyle is. For me personally, I work in an office and I'm only in there two days a week, but when I'm in there, there's a lot of paper and it does dry my hands out a lot. And so I tend to oil more frequently when I'm in my office. And I also oil every single time I wash my hands because I feel like the water washes away the oil. And so I just want to reapply just to be sure. So I think I probably oil a little bit more frequently than the average person. And yes, there is oil on every single thing I own. Thank you. Um, but I just think that it's probably if there was one nail product that I could keep, if I had to get rid of every other like nail product aside from my nail polish, it would be a nail oil because I just feel like out of everything, it has the most benefits to your nail health. I've done a whole video on my favorite oils or just like every oil I've ever used. I will link that up in the cards, but currently my go-to for everything is the Shop NBM Cuticle Buddy. And it's not necessarily their oil that draws me in, it's more their applicator, although I do like their oil. But I have so much oil from so many brands that when the Shop NBM oil runs out, I just refill it with some of the oils I already have. And then once I finally run through those, I'll probably just go back to buying the Shop NBM refill packs. The final step of my nail care routine is actually the newest step that I have added. And that is a final oil before bed. And now I know I just said like oil all day, every day, but this one is a little bit different. Recently, I've noticed that my nails have been drying out really quickly and they've been pinching in. And especially right before I go to bed, I'm worried, you know, in the like six or seven hours that I'm sleeping, they might break overnight. And so what I started doing was I got an oil bottle with a brush and I started brushing directly underneath my nail on the bottom side. Usually during the day, I just oil around the cuticle and spread it on the top. But right before bed, I only oil underneath my nail. And I used to oil right before bed just the same way that I oiled all day. But what that did was it got the oil rubbed off by my covers and it just, I feel like it wasn't doing what it needed to do. And the first time I was like, well, let me just try this. The next day I woke up and my nails were really pliable and really uh, saturated with the oil in a way that reminded me of nail treatments. You know, like it just felt like they had been in gloves overnight. And so I realized like, this is something I need to do every night in order to help my nails. And so that's what I've been doing. Right now I'm going through the rest of this Loon Gloss from, I think it's Le Mini Macaron. And once that's done, I'm going to switch to my Orly's Argan Oil because I really love that oil, but it's a little bit messier because of the applicator. And so I think it'll be nice for a nighttime oil right before bed and I can just drop a drop underneath each nail. It's perfect. So that's my overall nail care routine. And I feel like it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy to do. There's not too much you have to do outside of when you actually sit down to paint your nails. And even that stuff doesn't take too long and it's really, really basic. I think most people probably already do that. So now I have some do's and don'ts when it comes to your nails. And this is stuff that I follow 
you know, pretty religiously. These are things that I've found really helped me throughout my years of trying to grow my nails out and failing and finally realizing what I was doing wrong. And so the first big do that I have struggled to come to terms with and have finally accepted is do match your nails to your lifestyle. What I mean by this is you've really got to know what the max nail length you can have is while maintaining your current lifestyle. Take into account like your job, like the type of activities you like to do, just everything that you do in your life and figure out what is the nail length that fits well in that that kind of frame. Like if you're if you're doing construction every day, you probably don't want to have like inch long nails. It's probably going to not only hinder your job, but you're going to have some painful breaks while on the job. I used to lift weights and I haven't in a while, obviously, look at me. <laughs> um, but when I was going to the gym regularly and weightlifting, I couldn't keep my nails any longer than they are actually right now. Because at certain points when you try to deadlift, you're digging into your own palms and it can be really painful. And so I had to decide, am I going to sacrifice my lift strength or am I going to sacrifice my nail length? And I chose to sacrifice my nail length. And then COVID happened and my gym shut down and then I just started growing my nails out like crazy. So, but I have finally decided to get back into weightlifting. And so I know that this is really the max length that I can comfortably lift weights. And even this is a little bit long when I start to lift heavier. And so this is it. Like this is the length that I'm going to have to keep my nails at if I want to maintain my weightlifting hobby as well. And so I know my max nail length for my current lifestyle is this and this is what it's going to stay at. Don't do dishes without gloves on. Water can really weaken your nails over time. And when you're washing the dishes there, you know, your hands are submerged or they're just constantly having water running on them. And when my nails are wet, they tend to tear and that can be really uncomfortable. At my last apartment, we had to hand wash all of our dishes. And so I had to get some gloves for that. And it was like, it's fine. I don't mind washing the dishes with gloves. At my current apartment, we have a dishwasher and anything that can't be washed in the dishwasher, my boyfriend actually washes, but I do have a set of gloves if I need to wash something. And I know some people think that's really high maintenance, but I don't care. I'm not breaking a nail for a clean cup. I personally have a hard time finding gloves that work for me because one, I have really big hands, but also um, I'm allergic to latex and a lot of these gloves on the market do have latex in them. And so it's tough for me to find ones that are not like super expensive that are also latex free. And that's why my boyfriend tends to do more of the dishes than I do. But uh, just putting that out there in case anybody else also has like a latex allergy or latex sensitivity, be careful because a lot of stuff <laughs> has latex in it. Right, do use claw hand. And I have to explain this one because this is my own invention. I talked about this briefly last time, but one of the biggest reasons why I was constantly breaking my nails is because I just grab things. I'm just like, here we are, grab it, and like nails out, fanned out, ready to go. And I end up smashing my hands into like tables and walls constantly and like breaking four of my nails in one go. And I think like within the last two years, I finally learned my lesson. And so now when I reach for something, I kind of keep my hand like this and I grab the thing and then I bring it back. You know, I don't, I use claw hand and like I find myself like walking around like, I don't know, like a weird bird or like a T-Rex or something because I don't want my nails fanned out and snagging or smashing into something. It's definitely one of the weirder things that I probably consciously do, um, but nobody notices that you're doing it as long as you're, you know, just being really fluid with your movement. So, you know, don't worry about looking too weird doing that because it will protect your nails. Okay, don't clip your cuticles, all right? Listen, listen to me on this one. I did this recently on accident on one nail. It was actually when I was filming my Jelsey video and um, I thought that I was clipping dead skin off and as soon as I closed that cuticle nipper, I was like, ugh, because I knew it, it was, that was me. That was my body that I was cutting off of myself and 
it bled. It sure did. And it took a long time it still looks weird it still doesn't look right i'll pop a picture up it's still like a little bit red around the edge and the cuticle hasn't really fully grown back it just looks wrong and this is bad for a multitude of reasons so when you clip your cuticles or the you think that you're clipping like the dead skin there and you do make that mistake in the way that i did you are opening yourself up to a potential infection you know, we use our hands for a lot of things and having an open sore on your hand, you know, you just don't want that. You, I mean, you don't want an open sore anywhere, but you definitely don't want to get an infection right by your nail because it can cause your nail to fall off. You don't want that. And that's like a worst case scenario, but it's just be cautious, right? Number two, it looks nasty. Like it, it just, it was like a weird red ragged cut on my fingernail for like a week and a half. And again like if you especially if you use your hands like i take photos of my hands for not like as a job but it's my hobby and if i had done it on my swatch hand it would have made it impossible for me to take swatch photos for as long as it took to heal because i don't want a huge scab in my swatch photos nobody wants that and number three if you do have a cut like that on your finger it can make painting your nails and removing your nail polish unnecessarily painful because the, the chemicals in the nail polish, when they get close to an open cut, sometimes you can feel that and it aggravates it. And when you go to remove like the polish with a polish remover, it's touching your cut and that stings. It's not fun. So just don't clip your cuticles. Use a cuticle solvent every time. Do use hand masks. These are great as just like a fun little treat. They're like a fun little self-care moment for you, but also they do wonders for your nails and your hands. I buy the Aveeno ones and I find that they work really well and they're like $2 for a set. So it's a really cheap way to just treat yourself. And I found also when I'm using them, because what they are is they're like these little plastic gloves filled with like a serum that you just kind of put on each hand. And then you can't really do much when they're on your hands. And I'm a person who has to have like nine different tasks going at any given time. And so I'll turn on the TV to watch something and then I'll be doing, like I said, nine different things in front of me and I'm not focusing on what I wanted to watch in the first place. So it's kind of a nice way for me to force myself to sit down and just like watch a show or watch part of a movie or something like that. Do not peel off your nail polish unless you are wearing a peel off base coat. I feel like when your nail polish starts to lift or like flake, it's really tempting to start picking at them and peeling at them, but do not do it, especially if you have peely nails like I do. Peeling at your nail polish runs the risk of lifting off thin layers, but layers nonetheless of your actual nail. And that can weaken your nail over time and really thin it out. So if you're like, picking at it down here and you thinned your nail plate out down here, by the time that grows out, you're gonna have a really weak nail overhang and you're more likely to break your nail at that point. It can also just make your nails look really scuffed up when they're bare and it's just not like a nice look. Do oil daily. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but it bears repeating. If there is one thing you can do in your life to make a difference in your nails, it is oil. When I get busy or stressed out in my life, this tends to be the first habit that falls off and I notice it right away because then my nails start to chip or break because they're getting dry and you know feeling a little bit brittle. And so forming that habit of oiling your nails at least once a day is really important if you want to have that longer length and you just want your nails to look nice in general and it really helps for the skin around your nail as well. If you struggle with habit forming, one thing that I have found is really helpful for people in my life who struggle with habit forming is set alarms in your phone, set reminders in your phone. And you know, every single day at a certain time, it'll go off and let you know, and then don't dismiss that until you've completed the event. And then you can dismiss it. And eventually you might start to realize like you're already reaching for your nail oil pen at like 9 a.m. when you've set your alarm. So you can kind of create habits for yourself in that way. Okay, do not open cans with your nails or packages or anything like that. The amount of times people have handed me like packages with like that tight 
plastic wrapped around it and they're like you have nails help me open this I'm like girl no you do it I always use like some kind of utensil or a knife or something to open up anything when it comes to a can I take a spoon and I just take the scoopy part and scoop it up just like that and then you can do that or if my boyfriend's right there, he opens it. But I'm alone, so I have to use a spoon. I heard cork manicures say a few times, nails are jewels, not tools. And that became like my whole life motto. And now anytime I see anybody opening stuff with their nails, I'm like, hey, nails are jewels, not tools. Let's get a knife. People have given me a lot of crap for the, the spoon thing when I open cans and like, or if I hand a can to my boyfriend to open at a party or something, they'll be like, oh my God, she's so high maintenance. And I used to be kind of bothered by that. I'm like, I'm really not. Like, I'm just trying to maintain something that I've worked kind of hard to keep going. And then I decided to lean into it. And I'm like, yes, yeah, sweetie, what of it? Because you know what? Life's too short to care. Do file your nail snags immediately. Like as soon as you notice it, bust out your file and file down that snag because a little tiny snag can turn into a full blown chip or tear or rip and you don't want that, trust me. That's kind of what happened with this finger is I think that there was a little tiny snag and when I ran my fingers through my hair, my hair caught that snag and just sliced it right off. And for like four days, this finger hurt because of just how close it had cut to the quick of my nail. If you file down your snags as soon as you notice them, you are preventing like a gargantuan problem from happening later on. I promise you, you will never regret filing down a snag. And finally, do not buff your nails. Similarly to peeling at your nail polish, buffing your nails actively thins out your nail plate. Now I know I did this in a video recently and I talked about like, oh, this is like painful for me to do. And it wasn't physically painful. It was like painful in my heart because I knew I was actively thinning out my nail plate and it, it weakens my nails. It makes them kind of like patchier in places that I don't buff them evenly. And overall, it just makes your nails way more likely to break because you've made them more brittle. The absolute only exception I make to this rule is because I have peeling nails, if I see a peel that's starting to come up, I will buff that down and kind of like sand it down in order to prevent it from fully peeling up and peeling like all the way down my nail. Because if I just buff down a little bit of it, it prevents like a huge chunk of my nail from peeling up. And that's the only time you'll ever catch me buffing my nails. So that's my full nail care routine and all of my do's and don'ts that I actively employ in my daily life. Remember that all of these tips I think are going to be helpful no matter what your nail length is. So if you've got crazy long nails, you've got kind of like, would you call these medium nails? Or if you're rocking the nubs, like no matter what, oil is your best friend. Do not clip your cuticles. Like all the stuff that I said today, it applies to you. If you guys have any other tips and tricks or aspects of your nail care routine that you want to share, let us know down in the comments. I really love seeing in my comments, you guys give me so much good feedback and everybody kind of learns from each other, which I guess I never expected to see that. So let's keep that going down in the comments and let's all share our tips with each other. But that's going to be it from me. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.